Uh, very good afternoon, everybody. Um, today, I'm talk about OARP image with its related metadata harvesting. First of all, let's look what is OARP image. OARP image stands for Open Archives Initiative Protocol for Metadata Harvester. So from my point of view, OARP image was just harvesting records from one repository or one archives to another one. Um, the first version of OARP image was released in January 2001, followed by a minor revision in July, become version 1.1. So latest one was version 2.0, which was released in June. It's quite a while. Um, first of all, let's, let's look at um, an underlying technical overview of uh, underneath of OARP image. From my point of view, there was two techies. First, technical issues here. First one was HTTP. Second one was XML. I'm going to explain to you for details. So first of all, let's look at protocol to transfer metadata. We use HTTP. Given you guys are all experts, so you know it's typical client-server computing models. You can get the response, you can get a request and get the response, all sent via HTTP protocols. So requests are encoded, specific requests are encoded in GET or POST operations. So response always give you what well-formed XML documents. In principle, OARP image can support any metadata format. So it can be doubling call, mark, mod, ref CS, anything. But um, in practically, in ANT's OARP image harvester, we only support ref CS. Last year, we successfully implement our harvester to support ISO 19115, which is my colleague Alicia will be happy. So she don't need to prepare another format or translations. Of course, the default format for OARP image was doubling call. So now let's talk about the key two important components in OARP image. First one was data provider. Second one was service provider. So from my point of view, OAI was divide the world between data provider and service provider. So specifically in data capture projects point of view, data provider normally is your institutional repositories. So what you do was you expose your metadata to end harvester. And it's possible you supply free access to metadata, maybe item level data. And service provider here, which was we end OAI PMH harvester. Basically, it's a client application that issue OAI PMH request. Now let's talk about another issue with sets. So the purpose for sets was all over for harvesting of subcollections. Unfortunately, there was no unique guideline on how to define a set. So this is really up to your institutional repository managers. So for example, in this diagram, so that's, there were three sets. First one was ant, sets for ant. Second one was a bunch of images, maybe sent, sent to Picture Australia. Third one was a bunch of journals. Maybe it was sent to people uh, archive, National Archive of Australia, something or something else. So, f given there was no unique guideline on how to define sets, this become an issue was similar to ANT's collections, how to define a unique collection. So, it's sort of a, become a BA's task. You have to negotiate or you have to engage with your client to get mutually agreed sets for ANT. Finally, what I'm talking was sets can be overlapped which means there can be one item in end set, another item, same item can be in image, image set. So, but they fit to different places. So now let's, given we've already talked about service providers and data providers, let's talk about a brief talk about how it works. So as we said in data capture projects, service, provide, service provider mainly was end harvester. And the data provider can be your institutional repository, can be, say, Monash Arrow repository, Sweden Research Bank, Nova in University of Newcastle, or for Vivo in Uni Melbourne, or some, somewhere else. So what it doing mainly was our harvester always requests six important verbals to your data provider. Say, just give me data set based on different verbals. And all your institutional repository given was just giving me well-formed XML file. So this was six predefined verbals in OARP image. 
let's look at them in details. First one was identify. What identify doing was it's return general information about IR and maybe it's related policies. So let's look at examples. So this command. What I'm using is I'm using Griffith's Metadata Hub project. They have successfully configured OER Cat to support Rift CS. So what I'm doing here was I just tell you verb equal to identify. So hopefully you can give me what's your institutional in information and the related policies. This was a screenshot of, of the response. As you can see, uh, let me just point out this is your repository name. It can tell you, it also can tell you this is your base URL, which is very important in OER PMH. Right. So this, it tell you was protocol was 2.0. Also it tell you if you got any problem, who you contacting to. Second one was list metadata formats. So the purpose was just show you listing all the possible metadata formats in your institutional repository. Also, it can show you where's my schema location and where's my namespace. So let's look at example of this request. See its response. What it going was it's just request say list metadata formats. Apologize, you may not see my cursor is moving. It's too tiny. Um, in this response, as you can see, was metadata prefix was riff, which means the Griffiths Uni OAI cat is only support riff CS metadata format. Let's look at the set. So it's just provide a list of sets in with records which may be organized. So again, in this command, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Griffiths Uni OER cat, say, hey, show me all your sets in your repository. This is the response. It show you we only get one set. Set name was research project. Now let's look at list identifiers. So this can list all the unique identifier corresponding to records in your IR. So this identifier can be, as Nick point out in the morning, it can be globally unique persistent identifier or can be local identifier. Of course, you can also get parameter with I want to show for a certain period of time, show me all this identifier you created. Or you want to say, I want to see in end set how many identifier I minted. So let's look at examples of which I proposed. So in this command, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask OAI cat in Griffiths Uni, say, hey, show me all your list, all your identifiers, which is metadata format equal to RIFCS, which means show me all the RIFCS set identified. This is just part of the screenshots. It's giving me all the list of identifiers. Last two was the list of records, which means you can retrieve your metadata for multiple records. Of course, you must tell list record which metadata format you want for this record. Also, you got a choice to say was I want for a certain period of time for this record. Or you can also specify for what sort of sets you want. So let's look at this example. This example shows you was I want to list RIFCS metadata, all the list, all the rec RIFCS records. This is part of the screenshots. Apologize, I'm just not confident enough to show you the real one because it's take time. <laughs> so I'm just just show you the half of my screenshots. If you look at, uh, if I can guide you, look at at end of this XML file, you can see registry object group is equal to Griffiths Uni, which means this is a party record. Of course, it's got lots of records there. I'm just because of limitation of the screen. I can't show you everything. So final verbal, which I'm going to say was get record. This one, all you want to say was return metadata for a single identifier. For example, you TARDIS may mint and identifier, like slash double zero two. So if one day Steve and Lux said, I just want to get this record back. So you can say was uh, my met command was get record. Uh, my metadata format was RIFCS. My identifier was this. So this will give you a single one record, meet your requirement. Okay, now let's talk about another issue, which was data stamp. So as in OER PMH, each record can need a data stamp. What's the purpose for? Two purposes. One, to show when this record was created. Second one was to tell you when this record can, is modified. So using this data stamp, 
OER PMH and harvest can harvest by data range. For example, if one day and harvest pointing to Monash Uni in Anthony's OER, uh, my TARDIS repository, we just can say, show me all the records from 1st of August 2001 to 31st of August 2001. So it's just give me a range of records. Or another better thing was it can support incremental harvesting. So let's talk about what is incremental harvesting. So again, as we always said, the service provider here in data capture project is always and harvest. I'm assuming you just contribute your records, you not harvest the back. Okay, so your data provider can be different. So what Ant Harvest are doing in general way is it's say, hi, hey, what's new since last time I came in? Show me all the records. Different repository rep return different XML file. It can be all containing all the new records, all the modified records, or you may flag this record is being deleted and you need action was in our Harvest side to delete this record. Um, let's talk about a slightly complicated issue, which is you may use resumption token. The purpose for resumption token is maybe one day your repository just has too many data set. You may one day contribute 10,000 records to end. But given you may worry about your network traffic may lose part of your record. So what it's doing is you can re generate resumption tokens for your data provider. Let's look at what it's going. So end harvester pointing to your provider. Say, hey, I want all your new records. And I also say I want all your Rift CS records. As you can see, that's Rift. And also I say I need time was after January of August. Ah, uh, sorry, first first of July. This provider say I have 250. But given network traffic or given the policy of uh, give you at once per time. You can define the number of items you can define to end. One day, for example, if in Monash Uni, if they divide, I just give you one time, always give you 100 records. Then this become issues, you have 250. This time I only give you 100. So what it doing, Monash Uni doing was, it's generated me a token. Said I give you 100 first, and please remember your token is MON1 or something else. Then our harvester will reading, getting your record, continue start to Hey, sorry, sorry, wrong words. Talking to your data provider, say, I need more data set. This time, I give you a token was MON1, which means in your provider, you know you've already contributed 100 records. Then your response will be, I have 250. This time, I give you another 100. Then I generate you a new resumption tokens. So finally, and harvest finished harvesting all the records with the rest of 50. This time, your token was empty, which is indicates our harvester. It's end of your harvesting. So finally, I, what I'm talking about was I'd like to talk about some existing OER PMH solutions in end, or which can be, which has already been used in some projects. First one was JOI, um, which is you can find detailed OER JOI solutions in end's website. So this solution has been adopted by Uni Melbourne, Vivo. Am I right, SARS? Okay. So second one was OEI CAT, which is being successfully adopted by Griffiths Uni Metadata Hub project. Finally, one was Pro OEI for Fedora. We know it's a trouble, but lucky. Um, but lucky, our friends from Cyro they successfully developed a solution to support prop configure Rift CS to support give the give records to end. Of course, you may asking. There was plenty of OER PMH solutions, and here I only list you three. Does that mean you have to choose from three? Answer is definitely not. So whatever solution which meet your best internal requirements, you just go. Correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew. I'm I'm sort of doing. So you can choose. Uh, in the market, there was plenty of OER PMH solutions. Okay, too much. Finally, I'm talking about and supported metadata, which is I have sort of already covered in the previous. First one was RiftCS. Second one was ISO 19115, which was geographical information metadata format. And of course, you can say in your institutional repository, you have other format, DC, mods, mark, or other format. So what it required is it's required cross-working. 
from other different formats to RIFCS. So it's inevitable is you have to write XSLT to translate from, say, for DC or Mark or other format to RIFCS. My message here was given and some project has already written some XSLT translations. So before you decided to write a new translations, please talking to our BAs, we may can give you an existing one. So you just need to modify or you just adopt it. So save your time. Unless you really think it's been joined to do it yourself. So finally, what I'm going to talk was I'm just giving you a screenshot of in and sandbox and in and production. So suppose you have already have in stream repository and successfully configured your OERP image to support RIFCS. So we need a couple of mandate information from your side to set up information in our data source. So first one was key. What sort of key you can name for your data source? Second one was title. What's the title? It can be Ant, or Monash Merck, or Uni Melbourne Vivo project, or something else. Finally, third or fourth one was the base URL, which is you only supply the base URL of your OERP image. The fifth, sorry, the fourth one was in your provide. As we said, OEI divides the world into provider side and harvest side. So you really need talking to us is which type of provider type you supply. There were three types here. First one was RIF, which indicates you are going to use direct harvesting. As Andrew mentioned before, was you just use direct HTTP GET. We just use direct HTTP GET to get your re records. The second one was RIF OAI. Third one was RIF OAI PMH. Um, in harvest method, you can also talk about what is direct harvesting, is harvested based on OERP image protocol or something else. Of course, if you wanted, you can also set up some sets. So clearly tell you I'm going to contribute this set to Ant, this set to Picture Australia, this set to somewhere else. And you can also define how frequent your Ant harvest to get your records. Once per day, once per month, or once per year. So also we we may recommend you to leave your content number, your name, just in case if your harvester was server down or something else, we can contact you, say, hey, could you please take a look? Okay, I guess that's the end of my talk. I'd like to leave you with some useful links.